Sinead O'Connor, empath or narcissist, part 15. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. We now learn more about the relationship between Sinead O'Connor and her third and fourth children, giving us additional insight into what she was. Shane is my third child, born in 2004. He was a surprise. His father was married at the time, so there was great controversy around the fact that I was pregnant. Pausing there. The fact that she was involved with someone who was married shows potentially a lack of emotional empathy for that person's partner. Of course, it might be that he was married and separated, or if he was married and still in an active relationship, then that shows a lack of boundary recognition on the part of O'Connor as a cause of the interference in another person's relationship. I remain very fond of the child's father, Donald Lunny, although we are not close. Things became very difficult for Shane and for me. Shane is an extremely special character, very, very psychic and very, very spiritualized. When he was three, he asked me one day, were you in an earthquake when I was inside your tummy? At first I said no, because I forgot I had been. When he was two weeks in my belly, I didn't even know I was pregnant. I was on holiday in Malta, and there was an earthquake. I never thought about it again. I never mentioned it. I never told the child. I don't think I even told anyone else. Yet this three-year-old child was able to tell me I was in fact in an earthquake, and I don't know how he knew this. I'd venture to suggest that this is just child curiosity asking a parent if they've been involved in that, in an earthquake. Another time he was in his bath, and he asked me, did you ever meet God? And I said, well, maybe I did. Some kind of magical things happened to me, and maybe I met God in certain ways. The child tutted at me as the water was leaving the bath and said, that's not how you meet God, he told me. You have to make your dreams come true. Shane was assessed at age eight and declared a genius. I was told that he had the learning ability, the vocabulary and the mathematical reasoning of a 16-year-old. He began to study science at a college with the adults in Dublin, but he didn't enjoy going there, so it didn't last long. He reminds me very much of Clint Eastwood. He would get himself into all kind of trouble, but because he is so calm and so sweet and so genuinely charming, he managed to sail through things without them affecting him terribly badly, and I admire him for that. I know it is said that children like Shane can be difficult and challenging, but it is actually easy for me, because I am an unusual kind of mother. Shane is not a squared peg to be shoved into a round hole. He is the child who is most like me, I believe, to look at and by his nature, although he is, of course, the version of me with logic and reason. As Jack Nicholson might say, he is a very cool customer, Shane. I suspect this child is going to go into some type of work that involves helping people. He may turn out to be a very good chef. He would rather starve to death than eat anything I make. He's the type of cook who doesn't need a recipe and just throws everything into the pot and the pan and it turns out great. Another testament to my terrible, terrible cooking, although it does seem I do cook me a good baby. Yeshua was planned. He was born, I would say, two weeks early, on December the 19th, 2006. While I was pregnant with him, interestingly, the only craving I had was silence. With my other children, the cravings were types of food. In Jake's case, sausages and kiwi fruit. In Rasheen's case, lime pickles. And in Shane's case, fish pie. All Yeshua wanted was silence. I used to have to put myself in a dark room and just sit there, very, very silent. And it turns out Yeshua is a very silent person. His father, Frank Bernadio, has a daughter named Claire, who also has the same silence, and my grandmother had a great silence around her. Yeshua is very much the same. He loves his own space and likes to be alone, an extraordinarily creative human being. He is definitely the child who I think will become a singer. He has a phenomenal voice, a phenomenal musical talent. He plays the piano so well that you would think a record was playing. I'm rarely speechless, but when I hear him play piano, and when I hear him singing, I cannot speak for ten minutes. As soon as he starts performing, I'm out of the picture. 
Yeshua is going to blow me off the stage and out of the water, so I'm deliberately being very nice to him, and so is the rest of the family, because we reckon he's going to be a millionaire by the time he's 20, and we want to make sure he's good to us. He's turned into a teenager obsessed with superheroes and Harry Potter. If you meet him, all he will talk about is which superhero he would like to be and which superpower he would like to have. He's genuinely upset that he doesn't have a superpower, although I'm always telling him that he does. I tell him that he has a large empathetic heart and the amount of love he has for people is a superpower. Of course, he scoffs at me, saying, you can't save the universe with a large empathetic heart. I disagree. Yeshua is one of the funniest people I've ever met, with a laugh that makes everybody else laugh, even if you don't know what he's laughing at, because he literally cry laughs and giggles. Sometimes I'm finding very sweet these days, as he's turning into a carbon copy of his father. He even sits exactly as his father sits, and I have to say, his father is the best father that I've ever encountered, and Lord knows, Father's Day is a busy day in my house. In fact, it's quite the revolving door. People always want to know why I have four children with four different men. I tell them it just happened that way. It wasn't something I planned, but it didn't feel like I had to get married for the sake of having a child. Although I did marry my first child's father, we were, as I wrote, more like brother and sister. That's why the relationship did not work out. I couldn't compute how one might make love with one's brother. John Reynolds and I got married because we thought we should, or I should say because I thought we should, because we had a child together. That is not a mistake I was prepared to make again. So when I found myself pregnant by surprise with Shane, I was in love with Shane, although I didn't want to be with his father. The same was the case with Rasheen. In Yeshua's case, myself and Frank were together for five years, and we still remain the best of friends, and we live 300 feet from each other so the child can come and go as he pleases. I didn't set out to be unusual or independent. These were four babies that I wanted. I did have quite a funny time on tour a number of years ago when I had to explain to a German customs man calling from the Munich airport why my four children had four different surnames. The man was worried that I was child trafficking. I was on the phone with him in my hotel, and my children were being brought in to visit me by their male nanny, who also had a different surname. It took about 20 minutes to explain to the customs agent what the story was. Nothing made sense to him until I said, look, I was a bit of a slut, and then he said, oh, okay, and that was that but I was joking. Interesting little footnote. One night, years ago, my own father came to visit me and told me that he was almost jealous of the way I lived my life with regard to having children, not feeling like I had to get married and live the way a man might like to live. In short, while it's okay in society for men to have children with different women, sometimes women get looked down upon for having four children with four different men, or really any amount of children with different men. I have never actually been looked down upon for that, nor have I ever experienced any stigma from it. All I have experienced is my poor daddy saying he wished he could have lived his life the way I live mine. If I have no other purpose in this life other than to put these four children on this earth, well, that's enough for me to feel I did something useful in this world. I'm not just saying that because they are my children. They are absolutely unusual, intelligent, loving, compassionate, spiritually advanced, funny, worthwhile, hard-working human beings, and I couldn't be prouder. Insight into the third and fourth children, and also her attitude as a whole to the issue of having several children by different men. Is this a carefully managed facade of a narcissist? If she were mid-range, it's not quite gushing enough. But it might be that as an aware narcissist, she knows precisely what needs to be said to cause people to think that she cares in actual fact that she's self-centered or is this clear evidence of considerable emotional empathy for her children where she speaks about them with pride warmly and also recognizes her own shortcomings with regard to being a mother demonstrating accountability it all adds to the picture that is the complex individual that is Sinead O'Connor next we're going to address the issue of her mental health. Join me there in part 16. <laughs>